The public is being driven towards a smart city future which we are told will end systematic racism, overcrowding, pollution and crime. There are legitimate concerns with the smart city movement. Without proper protections, this vision will spell the end of privacy, property, ownership and freedom of movement. This is the dream of the World Economic Forum and the Illuminati and their partners at the United Nations. In a future where all towns and cities are outfitted with the latest smart tech, fighting to maintain privacy and freedom of movement is crucial. It's also important to understand the innovation zones, special economic zones and smart cities in the context of the World Economic Forum's The Great Reset Vision. How do these emerging technologies and concepts play a role in fomenting decentralized authoritarian vision imagined by the heads of the World Economic Forum. A smart city is promoted as an urban environment which uses data and emerging technologies to improve the quality of life for citizens share information with the public, drive economic growth and build a more inclusive and controlled society. This city would involve the use of technologies such as Internet of Things, artificial intelligence and drones to improve citizens' lives and solve the challenges of today while preparing to address those of tomorrow. Wow. Harnessing technology, intelligent design, sustainability sounds Awesome. Take a look at this declaration from SidewalkLabs.com, a project owned by Alphabet Inc. that claims to be reimagining cities to improve the quality of life via ubiquitous connectivity for all. Self driving tech, weather infrastructure, climate positive neighborhoods, a new standard of sustainability. Who could be against all this? But why do we need all of our devices from our toasters to our thermostats to our baby's diapers to be networked at all? Do a web search for smart homes or smart cities and you'll find a plethora of utopian marketing schemes telling you that we need this because this kind of network will improve your life. We can set mood lighting. We can adjust the temperature without even getting up. More data means we'll save money on our energy bill and we'll be saving the environment at the same time. Sensors on the street will let us spend less time looking for parking, and our car will even give us suggestions about what to make for dinner based on what's already in our fridge. It'll even turn on your appliances in preparation for your arrival home. But is this really about saving time and electricity? Because this also means that it will be impossible to exist in one of these cities without constantly being monitored, even in the privacy of your own home. Think about it. A smart city is the perfect infrastructure for surveillance. So who's behind the move for these smart cities? Well, let's take a look at the Smart Cities Council, which calls itself a coalition of thought leaders. It's a collection of huge multinationals, Microsoft, IBM, MasterCard, Cisco, Bechtel, and GE. Not quite the entities that come to mind when you think of sustainability. But coincidentally, they are the companies that come to mind when you think of corporate consolidation, the pillaging of the world's natural resources, surveillance, and control. Even Bill Gates is planning a smart city that calls itself, quote, a forward-thinking community 45 minutes outside of Phoenix, Arizona, right now. Wars have traditionally been fought over land or resources like oil. But today, there is no more important resource than data. Just last year, The Economist ran this headline, the world's most valuable resource is no longer oil, but data. This is also why we're seeing a technological cold war on China. China is way ahead of the US when it comes to smart cities and not being the leader in technological infrastructure that's the perfect groundwork for total surveillance and control seems to be making Washington pretty nervous. In Washington, Michelle Greenstein, RT. The World Economic Forum, the architects of the Great Reset and a host of other international public-private partnerships of the Illuminati 
have been promoting the concept as a solution for fighting climate change for years, the COVID-19 operation has helped further cement the idea that our cities and infrastructure are unsustainable and thus we must upgrade to smart cities. In June 2019, the World Economic Forum announced they were collaborating with the leadership of the G20 to lead a new global effort to establish universal norms and guidelines for implementation of smart city technology. The move brought the World Economic Forum into the fold of global organizations focused on bringing the smart city vision to life. This Global Smart Cities Alliance GSCA was formed to establish global standards for data collection and use, foster greater transparency and public trust, and promote best practices in smart city e-governance and digitization of environments and locale. The World Economic Forum and the Smart Cities Alliance describe the need for smart city technology as follows. To support the booming urban populations, many cities have come to rely on the Internet of Things, that is, the world's ever-expanding network of connected devices to collect, share and analyse real-time data on urban environments. The data gathered using Internet of Things technologies is helping these smart cities to combat crime, reduce pollution, decrease traffic congestion, improve disaster preparedness and more. However, it is also raising growing concerns about privacy, security and other risks. Without proper governance, these smart city technologies pose significant challenges that can add to their benefits, but despite the growing number of smart cities around the world, a global framework, a government controlled data collection system exists for regulating how data should be collected in public spaces such as by traffic cameras or Wi-Fi hotspots and subsequently used. The Global Smart Cities Alliance, GSCA and the World Economic Forum are now primed to be the lead organisations to establish a global framework for smart city governance. Additionally, in November 2020, the World Economic Forum selected 36 cities to pioneer a new global policy roadmap for smart cities developed by the G20 Global Smart Cities Alliance. The cities are meant to be the models for the smart city future. These cities will be used as the testing grounds for the World Economic Forum and G20 roadmap. These so-called pioneer cities include Barcelona, Spain, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, London, United Kingdom, Toronto, Canada, Neom City, Saudi Arabia, Mexico City, Mexico and San Jose, United States. Most recently, the World Economic Forum launched a platform called Shaping the Future of the Internet of Things and Urban Transformation to help transform the spaces in which we live, work and play to enable a more sustainable, resilient and prosperous future for all. The World Economic Forum is working with more than 100 global partners to implement the platform's key initiatives which include Future of the Connected World, Focus on the Internet of Things, Future of Real Estate, Discussing the Transitioning, the Real Estate Industry, the Future of Cities which will discuss the irresponsible and ethical use of smart city technologies with partners representing more than 200,000 cities and local governments. Clearly, the World Economic Forum is a major proponent of the push towards smart cities. Through their partnerships, initiatives and publications, the World Economic Forum is playing an outsized role in promoting the technological vision for urban areas. However, upon close examination, it becomes clear that the World Economic Forum is simply parroting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2030 Agenda. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are a collection of 17 interlinked goals 
designed to be a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all, the SDGs were set in 2015 by the United Nations General Assembly with the intention of achieving them by the year 2030. The SDGs were part of a larger resolution known as the 2030 Agenda or Agenda 2030. The language of the World Economic Forum and the Global Smart Cities Alliance clearly mirrors the language of the Sustainable Development Goals and Agenda 2030. For example, the 11th SDG is make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable due to depopulation and ethnic cleansing. The Goal 11 targets include reducing the adverse per capita environmental impact of cities and providing universal access to safe, inclusive and accessible green and public spaces by 2030. The United Nations has also launched the United for Smart Sustainable Cities initiative to help achieve SDG 11. According to the website, U4SSC serves as a global platform to advocate for public policy and to encourage the use of information and communication technologies ICTs, to facilitate and ease the transition to smart sustainable cities. Coincidentally, the fifth meeting of the U4SSC initiative took place on 9th October 2020, about one week before the World Economic Forum was involved in the event 201 pandemic simulation exercise. The United Nations is not alone in leading the charge for smart cities to help achieve UN SDGs. There are also non-governmental organizations, NGOs involved in the process. These include 100 Resilient Cities Network, 100RC, developed by the Rockefeller Foundation to help cities around the world to become more resilient to physical, social and economic shocks, and the C40 Cities Climate Leadership Group, funded by the Bloomberg Philanthropies, with former Mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg as president of the board. The push for smart city technology and programs is not exclusively the activity of international governments and NGOs. The spread of smart city propaganda also happens by local governing bodies which help implement the UN SDGs. In this way, local officials pass resolutions and form committees which are aimed at implementing Agenda 2030, the Great Reset goals under the guise of beautifying their respective cities and towns. One prime example is Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner. Turner is a great example of an individual using their position of power to emulate the UN SDGs. In May 2018, Turner established a Smart City Advisory Council to help transition Houston to the city of the future while working to reduce climate change. The age of technology is here and we cannot afford to sit idle. Turner said at the time, we must leap not stroll into the future. The Advisory Council will set the stage of Houston to become the smart city of the world. Under Turner's mayorship, Houston has also partnered with the tech giant Microsoft as part of the Microsoft Innovation Alliance initiative. Turner also partnered with Verizon Inc. to make Houston the site of the first 5G implementation in the United States. Turner's relationship with Verizon and the wireless industry are so great that the Cellular Telephone and Internet Association, the CTIA lobbying group, presented him with the 2018 5G Wireless Champion Award for removing barriers to the deployment of next generation wireless infrastructure. The CTIA stated that under Mayor Turner's leadership, Houston has streamlined the permitting process by not requiring a license or attachment agreement for new poles or small cells and completes review ahead of deadlines. The connection to 5G networks is important because the technology is the backbone of the smart city vision in order for the autonomous vehicles, surveillance drones, robot assistants, smart lights 
and sensors in the street to operate, there must be little to no latency between devices on the Internet of Things. This means smart cities must be outfitted with 5G. Indeed, the World Economic Forum's strategic intelligence platform has a page dedicated to the ways 5G will shape the world in the coming years. Mayor Turner has also sought to use COVID-19 as a promotion for Houston's Smart City for Resilience initiative. Forbes notes that Houston is using real-time data and digital contact tracing to identify community spread and more rapidly develop policies. The city has also partnered with the tech firm Intel for a smart water program that uses genetic markers to understand community spread. In January, the climate mayors announced Turner as the next chair of the nationwide coalition. In this role, Turner will help catalyze climate forward actions taken at the local level, provide an example of climate action for leaders at all levels of government. Turner is also the vice chair of the National Climate Action Agenda, a member of the Global Covenant for Mayors for Climate and Energy, and as October 2020, the chairman of the Resilient Cities Network. One of the core founders of the Resilient Cities Network is the Rockefeller Foundation, the same organization who founded the 100RC Network. In fact, as part of 100RC, the Rockefeller Foundation helps partner cities establish chief resilience officers to implement the goals of the organization. The Rockefeller Foundation is intertwined with the Gates Foundation as part of the COVID-19 operation. They are also working with the World Economic Forum on the Common Pass COVID-19 vaccination passport to increase digital surveillance of the public. In February 2020, Turner and his team released the Resilient Houston Report as part of the overall Resilient Cities Network. Resilient Houston includes 62 actions aligned with UN SDGs. The report identified six themes to advance implementation of these goals, including smart cities, technological advances and innovation at the heart of advancing smart city initiatives will be harnessed, the report states. At first glance, there is a tendency to solely acknowledge the benefits of the schemes proposed by these organizations. The World Economic Forum Global Smart Cities Alliance, the United Nations 100RC and Mayor Turner all claim that smart city technology will help usher in an era of sustainable and inclusive urban environments. They say that the Internet of Things, the IoT, 5G and smart cities are needed to bring in this utopian future. These organizations and the SDGs they seek to implement often speak of equity and sound rather innocuous to the casual reader. After all, creating more bike lanes and green spaces for people to relax outdoors sounds wonderful until you realize that the World Economic Forum Agenda 2030, the Great Reset Agenda, involves limiting who can drive and who can fly. The reality is that the UN and the World Economic Forum are only paying lip service to protecting privacy and liberty. For example, Port-au-Prince Haiti is using cell phone data records combined with machine learning techniques to identify the most common traffic patterns and flooding risks in order to better plan and protect the city's transport infrastructure. However, there is no discussion of what will happen to those phone records which have been collected and who has access to them and for how long. Without proper protections, billions of people's personal data will be used to shape and put into action control measures in the technological world around them. In truth, the push for smart cities, the UN SDGs and the Great Reset is based on a deeper understanding of hidden agendas to monitor, control, manipulate and direct all life on the planet using technology. The true agenda of the World Economic Forum and the United Nations is to establish a global technocratic state or a one world government where alleged experts and technologists make decisions for the vast majority of the people in the name of saving the environment.
The only thing that stands in the way of the implementation of Agenda 2030 and the Great Reset is a current mass awakening of free humans around the world. Millions of people have begun to question the true purpose behind the COVID-19 lockdowns and mandates. Millions of people are now seeking to educate themselves and build a better world outside of the hands of the predator class. The people are rejecting the new normal and embracing the greater reset.